Madume Kalapeng, all of you at home and welcome to another exciting episode of the Ladies Club Mzansi's Leading Women's Sports Show. Thank you for joining us as we keep you up to date with all the trailblazers, the game changers and the amazing women in sport. Now, our conversation today is one of my favourite. It's all about women who are making strides in my favourite sport. Haki. Haki has had a good story to tell with women taking great strides in the sport over the last 30 years. And the number of girls interested in playing hockey has also continued to really grow. And it's really amazing to see most of them now shining on the international stage. We'd like to hear from you your thoughts on our topic. So do get involved with us on social media platforms, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. It's at SABC Sport. And just use the hashtag the ladies club now we're going to be uh, joined by really two awesome guests today we'll be chatting to Kim Hubach and Izal Fester who are both blazing the trail with stellar careers in hockey they're right here in studio with me to share their very exciting story Kim been there done that and the new international star now um, is our good morning and welcome to the ladies club thank you very much for having us Kim it must be really uh, interesting to see from when you started, how you paved the way, and now to see the younger generation going in the same footsteps and eventually wearing the green and gold. It is very exciting. Um, I think a lot has changed, times have changed, but the youngsters of today and the youth coming through hockey from school level all the way up into the senior national side, it's really, really exciting to see the skill and the determination and the hard work coming through with them. And Isel? Yes, no. Um it's, I've had the privilege of playing with Kimi um, at Northerns now for a couple of years, so it's been good to actually learn from them and uh, bring it through. Um, over the years it might change a bit, but we learn a lot from them and yeah. playing with the experience, more experienced players, so that's very exciting. Why hockey? I know why hockey. <laughs> why hockey? I think hockey, for me, I was involved with a whole lot of sports at school level yeah. um, and could choose different sports. But hockey for me is, it's a family sport. So from the guys to the kids can play it. It's also a game that changes continuously. There's not one game that's exactly the same game sure. or the perfect game. Sure. Um, so you've got to continue working and there's always a challenge involved with hockey. And it's all yourself coming from a family, two boys, the only girl, why hockey? <laughs> yes, that's exactly that. I um, <laughs> was looking for something a bit more uh, tough and physical, but mom and dad was like, not rugby or cricket, go yeah. play hockey rather. Yeah. And yeah, I ended up loving it and yeah, carried you on You haven't looked there. back since? Yeah. Well, we'll definitely be continuing with our chat with our two amazing guests a bit later. For now, let's set the tone with an inspiring quote. And this one comes from the former U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama. And she says, the only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work hard for them. Michelle Obama, of course, is a qualified lawyer, right, and former U.S. First Lady from 2009 to 2017. She is the wife of the 44th U.S. President. That's Barack Obama. As the First Lady, Michelle was involved in various causes, notably supporting military families and ending childhood obesity. In 2018, she released the autobiography, Becoming which, which garnered her uh, lots of attention. I absolutely love that. Just hear it again. The only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work really hard for them. And we're going to continue with that conversation right after this because we do have amazing game changers. We're talking all things hockey and the Olympic Games when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are still with Kim Hubach and Lizelle, Izel rather for Ster. And Kim obviously was a highly fierce hockey defender in her playing days, and she is still playing and currently coaches at uh, the Conwell Hill College. She played 136 test caps for the senior national team before hanging her boots, but she's still using them. She started her coaching career with the University of Pretoria as an assistant uh, coach in 2008 and has never looked back. When you look at the young, younger generation, 
station in Izal. She started playing hockey when she was nine years old, and she's currently part of the SA Women's Squad training for the Tokyo Olympic Games. And that's what I want us to get into because it's everybody's dream. Um, in terms of an athlete. If you're an athlete, you play sport, you want to represent your country, you want to wear the green and gold, and you're going to be representing South Africa come Tokyo 2020. And when you guys heard the news, how, did, how, did, how was that feeling like? Yo, um, so I'm just part of the squad yet. The, the team hasn't been announced, yeah. but just being part of the process has been um, amazing because, like you said, it is the ultimate dream yeah. to be participating at the Olympics. Um, yo, when we heard the news, um, they actually posted on our group and everyone was kind of not reacting because I think everyone didn't want to get their hopes up that Only to be disappointed, actually, yeah. yeah. So everyone was kind of, okay, but is this a joke now, mm. you know, um, where's, where's the catch? So no, it's, I can't describe the feeling. It was, it was really good to hear and just, um, Amazing to know, okay, well, we have this incredible opportunity to be part of um, the squad that's, that's um, training and um, getting ready for the Olympics. And Kim, tell me about your journey. You, you were there during the qualifiers back in 2012? Yes, I was involved with it in 2008 and 2012. Yeah. Um, 2008, I was pretty new into the setup. Yeah. 2012 was probably one of my biggest disappointments mm -hmm. in uh, my hockey career but looking back I think personally I think everything happens for a reason um, major disappointment because as you say it's everyone's biggest dream but the build up to that if I look at what I saw the people I met the friends who became family um, in retrospect it's probably just a small yeah. part of a dream I was still lucky enough to be part of the process literally right up until the end. Mm. How, how, how important is it for someone to, or an athlete, to still be mentally strong, even if you don't get that nod to say you're in the team because you've been part of the qualifiers? Yo, I think it's, um, it's a big part of sport, that disappointment of not making a team. I would love to see or meet someone that's never had that um, yeah. before in yeah. their whole career um, and I think that even though it's really difficult to deal with those situations mm. th that's what makes you stronger so it's good sometimes in in the moment it's terrible and um, I think we've all been there that mm. you haven't made a team that you've worked hard for that mm. you've felt good about but that ends up making you stronger and um, makes you work even harder to reach to reach that dream that you that you want and Kim your journey is almost a 360 because you're now a coach also so you understand the other side mm. of having to select to teach to nurture to to almost abba a, 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 a someone's career and harness it and say you can do it um what has changed from when you look from yesteryears to now um, I think a lot changes as a coach, yeah. um, especially experiencing disappointment and experiencing the sitting on a bench for minutes which feel like hours. True. I think you can look back and look at the kids and say, you know what, I understand it and possibly not put that child on a bench because I've seen a lot of coaches and it's possibly a mistake that they make purely yeah. because they don't understand the feelings and the emotions behind not being selected and I think that's why possibly not making the 2012 Olympic team mm. was for me to experience that disappointment so that I can carry over that message to the youth of today yeah. and to say, don't give up, follow your dream. And these are the reasons. Because I think a lot of the time you don't get answers as to why you don't make a side. Yeah. And that really, yeah. Yeah. it's not hurts, but it's a disappointment because you don't understand where Why? you fell short yeah, yeah. and uh, and what you must improve then going forward that's exactly it you don't know where you fall short so how are you supposed to bet to yourself and i think that helps quite a bit for me to carry over that message and to become a better coach in that sense and both of you what are hockey's biggest challenges at the moment the fact that for us it's not a professional sport mm. so it's it's difficult to you have to have a career outside of hockey a job that pays the bills. So um, that's really a struggle. You, you have to sacrifice a lot because you have 
have to have your job, but also train hard and um, stay on top of you, your training. And that's really difficult. And also to compete then with other countries where it's professional, where it's a professional sport, because we we don't uh, have the opportunity as much to travel overseas and play other countries um, as others do where, where it's professional and they um, have that opportunity. Mm. Without a doubt, I think finances are always a problem, not just for the players themselves, but yeah. I think as the teams, for instance, the under-21 team that's preparing for the Junior World Cup, to get the players together costs money, and to get exposure costs money, but to get exposure, you need the sponsors, mm. and you only get the sponsors if you get the exposure. Mm. So I think SA Hockey has been fortunate to get a couple of sponsors, and I think they've got a few, Zell can comment yeah. on that now, but a few good sponsors that have come on board to their program and their dream to go to Tokyo now. Yeah, we've got Supergroup at the moment. That's been absolutely amazing. Um, last year we went to Spain where they covered our full costs. Wow. And it was, we, it felt, we actually felt like professional uh, sportswomen um, while we were there. And I must say since they've been on board, we've really been treated as if it's a professional environment. and. They've been really good to us. I think the viewers also don't understand what we mean when we say uh, some female sports need sponsors. I think they, they think we're probably saying we just want to be paid more. Mm. But what does it mean to have a sponsor, for example, being part of a national team setup? How does it assist you as a professional? Because you are a professional. It might not be a, we might not have a professional league, but mm. you are a professional athlete. Mm. What does it mean to you then? Um, so at the moment we aren't even looking at getting paid to play, yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually having a sponsor to facilitate uh, training camps because we are spread across South Africa mm. so to come together to train together as a team we can also only do that occasionally um, because of funding to get everyone together, it's uh, travel costs, accommodation, all of that. Um, and then, of course, to play other teams and other countries, it's traveling there or having money to host them or uh, make arrangements to, to get other countries to come and play here. So it's not even getting paid a salary, but it's covering costs just to, to be able to get that experience and playing other teams and training together as a team, uh, which is, which is yeah, what funding is, is at the moment required for. When you look at in your time, Kim, was it, it, is it, it, it just sounds like we're talking about your time mm. because the issues are still so prevalent. I think we had very similar issues, um, yeah. probably the same, but I was fortunate enough when I started in the senior national side, it wasn't much money, but there would be a incentive um, throughout the year once you've played. But I'm talking about incentive. I don't think it would cover petrol these days. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely the same problem that we're facing. And so Zell talks about us, or not us, but the team getting together for training camps. It's also difficult when you don't have a sponsor to go and get international experience. Plenty more to chat about with our great tech game changes after this. You are still watching the ladies club mona mokana lenya bo bedu mwe emotla ha re sheba di trailblazer le game changer tsa rona ka jeno re sheba trailblazer ya rona ele mzansi's hockey star in Turkey Chamberlain and she was born on the 3rd of November and started playing hockey when she was just 14 years old and has since become an exceptionally talented hockey player and coach when i mention names such as Turkey what does that mean to you <laughs> i remember Turkey as a little one in her first year Wow. <laughs> in the tux clubhouse um, and at that stage she would come to us with the exam pad asking everyone for their signatures when we had a training camp oh. in Pretoria and to see how she's climbed it's actually wow. <laughs> unbelievable to see what she has and that achieved in pretty much a short time but it was absolutely just hard work. Sure <laughs> and what, what comes to your mind? For me, she's um, a senior in the team, um, a very experienced player that yeah. 
we just learn so much from every single training session yeah. and um, yeah also um, I remember that she played at Northerns when I was still in school so also someone that I looked up to yeah. since then and just watched how she's grown and um, become this experienced um, senior player in the team. What is the secret to success? I think absolute hard work and just don't give up. Oh, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were going to say as well? <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, definitely hard work. Um, it also requires a little bit of luck and yeah. talent, mm -hmm. but I think hard work, um, you need hard work to keep the talent and uh, opportunity, luck, all of that together and um, yeah. You, you guys are still playing together. Tell me about the, the fact that you're playing with such young ones. I stopped <laughs> because I couldn't anymore, but you still play provincially. I oh, am, wow. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, it is sometimes. I don't realize that I'm getting older sometimes. <laughs> But when I was playing at IPT um, at the end of last year, it was quite scary to note that when I started my senior IPT career, yeah. some of the girls that I was playing with last year at senior IPT were just born or weren't born yet. <laughs> sure. So it is quite but scary, it... but I enjoy it and I love playing with the youngsters and it's it's nice for me to be able to give back. I think a lot of the time you yeah. take so much from sport and That's you take true. so much from sponsors That's and coaches true. that it's at some stage you've got to give back and it's nice for me to be able to give back as a player and to lead by example. For us it's such an incredible opportunity because we get to learn from so much experience and um, a lot of situations you can imagine over such a long career that the situations that she's been in, yeah. um, just so much composure and um, she really helps uh, not just the young players but um, our whole team just we learn so much from her in uh, different situations yeah. and how she keeps keeps us calm and yeah no, for us it's it's great um, to learn from 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 her experience. And Kim what is the state of hockey at the moment and where do you think it's going? I think it's really exciting that both the men and women have been given the opportunity to go to the Olympic Games. I think it's a big step for SA hockey. It would have been really sad if they weren't able to go. So it's a great opportunity for us to showcase our talent at the highest level. Yeah. I think development wise we are doing well. Um, the PHL tournament I think has done a lot for SA hockey in general. I think hockey is on its way up, but it takes time and money, literally. But I think it's exciting to see our under-21 team, which the squad is really strong. I think it's one of the strongest squads we've had in a long time. Mm -hmm. So that purely shows that what we're doing at grassroots level is good, and it's working for SA Hockey. And in terms of development, uh, are we still playing on grass? Barely, I don't think, or what I hear from even primary schools yeah, now, yeah. play, um, start on playing Astro. on Astro yeah. and where we've, yeah, we've known grass hockey even. <laughs> and the ball just comes um, around. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it was a skill to learn yes, how to, yes. you know, stop the ball when it's bouncing. And <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's exciting to see actually how big hockey's become in our country that more and more primary schools um, do have their own AstroTurfs and now even other schools are building a second one mm. so it actually shows that there is interest in the country for um, for hockey to grow and you know, which is exciting. And what about those areas? Kim, you, you're a coach, I mean what we're seeing on screen is, is really fantastic with regards to the kids um, having a, a, a back and forth hitting on an Astro but mm. having an AstroTurf is quite expensive, it's only a few a few that can afford it. Mm. So in terms of the kids that are pro probably in townships, rural areas, how is the development of hockey in those areas? It oh. is difficult um, and I often think a lot of talent is lost yeah. in those systems, in the rural areas. You find unbelievable talent there sometimes but yeah. they're not exposed to 
necessarily what a child in a private school is exposed to, but what is exciting is a lot of the schools are realizing the need for it, including the public schools, and they are finding the funding even if it's just a plain sand based astro, mm. which is good, but the kids definitely need to learn. They get set back quite far, and me being involved with a school that didn't have an astro and playing in a league where they play on astro, you can see the difference yeah. by yeah. far. So hopefully, investors will see the need for that and we can start developing in rural areas, putting down an astro or a multi-surface area that you can play yeah. football as well as hockey on it, so that it's not necessarily as long as the football grass, but it's better than a normal grass field. Plans for 2020. Your mm -hmm. plans are Tokyo. Yeah, hopefully. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's the whole build up, um, training hard, just working hard towards that goal. and. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, obviously the dream is to make the team, but if not, be, just being part of the process and assisting the team that's going to um, yeah, go as prepared as we can and to do our best. Okay. My plans for 2020 are to continue giving back and building the hockey academy that I run, yeah. as well as play in provincial IPT <laughs> again. Continue playing, yeah. <laughs> Once again, um, I think this year will be the record for the most senior IPTs played by sure. an individual. And I'm excited to say it's been for the same province. Wow, that's amazing, that's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, but basically to build and develop hockey from the academy through to possibly coaching the under 21 side as well. When traveling, what is a must have for you guys? <laughs> and say my Bible. Awesome, that's beautiful. Yeah, I'd like to agree with um, Izel there. Yeah. How important is that then to your faith? I think it's, personally, I think it's a personal, um, something that's for you, and yeah. each person's yeah. journey is different, mm. but I don't think there'd be a day where I'd be able to get by without just that quick little prayer upstairs. Mm. And you often see things that are answered in different ways. And that's just a personal opinion. Would you want to meet at the Olympic Village? Oh, I would say I'd love to meet Roger Federer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's not a bad option. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't thought that far about it. But Roger Federer is, that's quite, it's, well, I've only been to the Commonwealth Games, but I think it's quite the same as the Olympic setup. And the yeah. amount of people that you meet there and the stories that you're able to exchange yeah. as normal people, yeah. but in the public's eye, you're not normal people. No. It's actually quite exciting and it's an exciting opportunity. I don't know if yeah, I'd probably be like um, a normal uh, spectator. Yeah. I was just be everyone that, yeah, <laughs> that I'll see would probably be, yeah, uh, calm yourself down. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much for spending the morning with us. Uh, mm. It's really been a pleasure. I love the work that you're doing as a coach, giving back, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of your programs, actually, coming Thank through you. from the school that you were at, and now you, you're giving back to them. And hopefully we see you in the team as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. All right, mm. it's been an absolute pleasure. That's the, all the time we have for you for today. Thank you so much for spending it with us. Remember, you are welcome to send through your ideas of trailblazers or stories about women that continue to inspire you. Our social media details are on the screen, so do get in touch with us. Who knows? Maybe you can be part of the show next time. But I'm Lebo Mutswedi for SABC Sports on the Ladies Club. Remember that greatness is earned but never given. Goodbye.